<laughs> uh, as you just saw that we are at Movie Park Germany. Yes, uh, we are Loops and Lapwaz, and this is the first day officially of our uh, big park holiday, the Epic Road Trip 2024. <laughs> yes, um, as you can see. We're at Movie Park Germany. Yeah. Um, weather is looking to be not so great today, unfortunately, but uh, we'll make the most of it. It does seem yeah. like, um, from the little bit of research that I've done, there's quite a few things that are indoors, so that's, uh, that's quite handy. And if we end up having to ride uh, Studio Tour and Van Helsing's factory over and over again, I don't think I'm going to be too upset about that. Yep. Um, interesting fun fact on the way in, uh, Bottrop, where the air, this uh, movie park is located, is twinned with Blackpool, yeah, which, so, I, uh, yeah, which uh, is quite unique. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's, that's quite fun, because Movie Park Germany also features an Nickelodeon land, as does Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Um, yeah, I think that's, you know, the, is that just coincidence? I, you know, yeah. I don't know, but it's a bit, a bit bizarre as that one. But uh, yeah, a bit later on, I'll go into some of the um, the, the facts and history of this one, because this park has gone through quite a lot of changes over the years. Um, you start off in the 70s, I think it was, but over the years, it's had so many different owners and it's gone bust so many different times, but it seems to be doing well, um, you know, as, as movie park Germany. So yep. um, yeah, we uh, can't record on rides, unfortunately. I did record. I uh, did a uh, request ahead of time, but uh, they said no. Um, you know, because of the uh, the the, the, you know, the speed of the rides and such, which is absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, we can show you what the rides look like, discuss our feelings and uh, and whatnot about the attractions and and obviously food and things like that. But yeah, we can't take you on unfortunately. Yes. But uh, still looking forward to a great day. So yeah, uh, we'll see you on. See you later. <laughs> So we got into the park and headed straight for uh, Star Trek Operation Enterprise, we did. Uh, which is essentially it's like Icon. So I'd say smaller brother, because uh, in some regards it's bigger than Icon, but in others it's not as much. Uh, it's not as long as Icon for one thing. It's only no. uh, got the one launch section, but it is a multi-pass launch. But as for the ride itself, uh, it's enjoyable. It is. It's very, very comfortable. It's incredibly smooth. And if you're a Trekkie, I do recommend coming to see it because it is well themed. Yeah, like, we've got costumes and things like that. Like first impressions as you walk in, you actually do genuinely feel like you are on a, a flight deck. Yeah, um, on the or, Enterprise. On the Enterprise. Yeah. Um, and you get to see the bridge as well, which is really cool. Um, and a few other bits and pieces. So yeah, from a Trekkie point of view, it's an absolutely phenomenal ride. Yeah, um, I'm, I don't think either of us are Trekkies, uh, but uh, yeah, it's still, even if you're not a Trekkie, it's still you know, it's a good fun ride. You know, if, you, yeah. you know, if you're liking Hyperion and you have liked Icon, you're probably gonna like that because it's comfortable, it's smooth, it's got, it, it, for all intents and purposes, it's the same model as Icon. It's just the trains look kind of slightly different. Yeah, the layout's slightly different as well. It's a lot different. Um, it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah. um, but I enjoyed it. I found it like really enjoyable. And unlike Icon, where your first couple of goes on it until you're used to what it does, I feel it can kind of assault your senses a little bit. Star Trek doesn't do that. It kind of gives you enough time to sit there and go, right, done that element, into the next one. Done that element, into the next time. one. And it's nice, and I like that. Yeah, um, so that's really it for Star Trek. I mean, after that, we did do the photo pass. Is that what yes. you're about to say? Uh, yeah. Photo pass and on ride photos, uh, on ride video as well. Yeah. Um, if you're sat in the front row, you can scan. Any row, any row. Any row? Yeah, it was any row. You can row, scan yeah. a QR code and literally it'll do a video of your ride, on ride video. 360 video at that for 10 euros I think it was yeah, yeah 9.95 yeah. or something like that I'll put the video that we've got here and it's a little <coughs> bit disappointing in that it didn't record the whole ride but I think it might have been a problem with the camera that was recording not necessarily the software or anything like that I think it just might yeah. have stopped um, so I'm a bit disappointed in that but we did get you know, we got we got some of it as you'll have just seen yeah um, but the photo pass yeah 19.95 um, for uh, all, all the digital photos you could possibly want which yeah. is good because that's what I want I like that in yeah. parks and it's just digital all photos for that 19.95 you can get one where you can pay for three photos or one where you can pay for five 
photos yeah. as well on the physical front if you wanted to. Yeah. But for us, we like digitals. digitals are good because it's less, a bit less to carry around the parks. Yeah, and I just, <laughs> I just like having digitals anyway. Um, so yeah, once we've done Star Trek, we then sort of had a bit of a mince around and we were going to go on Van Helsing's factory, but because the weather's going to be a bit crap today, supposedly, yeah. uh, we were leaving the sort of proper indoor rides until it starts to rain like everybody else will do. Um, so we went into the, uh, their version of Nickelodeon Land, didn't we? We did, yeah. We went on a uh, fairy, fairy world, fairy fairy world, world spin, spin. <laughs> which if you know your Cosmo and you wander, um, it's basically a teacups ride, themed to fairly odd parents. Pretty good ride, really smooth. Yeah, um, um, it's just a teacup. Yeah. There's not really much more that you can say about it. Exactly, um, yeah. um, it could have been done with a bit more theming around like that because it's literally just got some signs above it, but that's about yeah. it. Um, and then and from then, there we went on to Jimmy Neutron's, didn't Jimmy we? Jimmy Neutron's Atomic Flyer, which is the most bizarre coaster I think I've ever seen. In the, it's an inverted coaster, so it's a, so I think it's a Vekoma suspended family coaster. So it's the same as, bam, no, no, um, Flight of the, the Terrace at Polton's, Polton's Park, Park. Yeah. but the track doesn't have a central spine. Yeah. It's got the same track as what um, 13 has, it has in that it's yeah. just you know two tracks with a spar in between. It's, it's it's bizarre, but yeah, we got managed to get near enough back row. Um, quite forceful at the back as you go over the lift hill. Yeah. After that. Not much. <laughs> no, not that, not much, but it's still a gentle ride. And for, your, for the little ones that that's going to be their first coaster, potentially, it's an absolute brilliant starter coaster. It's nice and smooth. It's not violent. It's not jerky. And it's just lovely. Yeah, no, I, uh, I agree with that. Even though I say that after, you know, it's kind of forceless afterwards. I don't mind that, you know, yeah. I didn't, I don't go into a kid's area expecting your know, rides to rip your face off. So no, that was absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, and then from there we, we were up and down about Dora's uh, log flume but we're yeah. probably going to do the water rides towards the end of the day if we get a chance. Yeah. So we went on to uh, what was it? Hollywood Studio, uh, the Studios, Studios Tour. Tour. Moby Park Germany Studios, Studios Tour, Tour which is a bit of a mouthful. Yeah. So it's just Studios Tour anyway. Yeah. Um, and out straight out of the gate this is what Uncharted should have been. Um, it's excellent in you know, sort of pretty much every way. It could do with a little bit more. I feel like he's missing something. But yeah, in a nutshell, you, uh, you, you board your train, you then go through multiple scenes uh, you know, throughout yeah. the ride. I won't really spoil it too much, what goes on in there, but there's launches, um, there's sound effects, and there's, there's all sorts of things yeah. going there, and it's and comfortable. And there's odd elements as well that you don't often see on roller coasters, yeah. um, which really add to it, I think. So what I'll do is I'll put a spoiler warning really here, and if you don't want to know what happens, obviously then you know, carry on. However, there's a turntable in there, so yeah. the, uh, the train comes on and it does a uh, 270 degree turn on this turntable. Yeah. There's, um, there's two launches in there? Yeah, there's yeah, two. two. There's a launch, yeah, launch backwards, a launch forwards. Yeah. Um, there's a scene where uh, you're in like a, a tornado uh, house that's obviously been hit by a tornado, yeah. and it's all screens around you. The roof rips off and it belts yeah. you out backwards. Yeah. Um, that's quite a significant chunk of that ride in back backwards. Yeah. Not a lot. Not enough that you're gonna sit there and be like, I feel sick, but enough to go, ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, then from the backwards section onto the turntable, the turntable then takes you into a um, race car scene. Yeah, and scene you with a race, race car. A racing car. Um, um, it, it's that second it's cheesy. launch is cheesy, but it's fun because it literally it launches you out, and then you really, really quickly slow down as you come out and do an outside section. Yeah, outside the, um, uh, the, the building, which I think amps it up a little Ooh. bit because uh, you kind of like, oh, slow down, slow down, Woo, and le then let's go. And it's yeah, a and then you uh, you yeah, weave through um, you know a couple of sections. You, you do uh, like King Kong. I think there was a scene with King yeah. Kong in there, and yeah. then you're essentially into the station again, and you think, well, yeah. wow, that was what did we just yeah. experience? And there's a pre-show pre-show section as well, and you very go reminiscent the of um, the Darren Brown's Ghost Train one, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a brilliant little ride, and it is genuinely one of them rides you can ride over and over because so you, there is so much to see, and there is so much you are going to miss on that first run through. Yeah, so that's Studio Tour. Yeah. Uh, then we had to go on uh, Ghost Chasers, wasn't it? Which is yes. uh, SpongeBob themed uh, Wild Mouse, and it is a Wild Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it lives up to its name. If you think Rattlesnake at Chesington is janky, oh, oh, oh this one's in, you're in for a treat with this. Yeah, it's not um, quite as abrupt as what uh, yeah. Rattlesnake is, but it you know it yeah. still throws the you into the corners. The brake runs on this are a lot smoother. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it, it is uh, you know 
I'd say a lot more comfortable, but even then, it's yeah. not like a wild mouse. You know, yeah. saying it's comfortable is like sitting on a pincushion sort of thing, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. Um, it does chuck you into the corners. And because, unlike sort of Rattlesnake, it's not all the ride. You can see all the ride from the ground up. Yeah. There are a couple of corners where you go around and go, you look over the edge and go, ooh, should right, have done I, that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a particularly tall ride or anything like that, but because it's open, you know, there's yeah. no buildings it goes in and out of, you can see the whole, uh, you know, whole track. And go, oh, yep, yeah, a bit yeah. higher up. Um, but yeah, once we'd done that, we then yeah. uh, came and had some dinner and we were kind of struggling, I suppose, a little bit. Yeah, we were looking forward to doing one of the buffet places. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're not open today um, uh, due to park numbers. Um, or something. We or, don't know exactly. Yeah, but yeah, it's the, sure. uh, the Van Helsing one that we were looking forward to going in there and having a look. Yeah. I think the pizza pasta buffet is open, but it's pizza pasta. You know, we, yeah. we, you, <laughs> you get that at every park. Yeah. Um, so we've ended up at the uh, what they call El they, Sombrero. El Sombrero's Tex Mex, which doesn't do anything Tex Mex at all. No, it doesn't. And no. this is where like sort of the, the the great train of hype sort of comes to a massive halt. Yeah. Because I just paid fourteen euros for essentially mm-hmm. some dirty, dirty fries. fries. Yeah. And, and a drink. It, it they were absolutely fine, but yeah. the portion wasn't exactly massive, and it was as you'll see here. Um, it was uh, bacon and cheese, and yes, there was cheese, and yes, there was chips. But there was like you know, a sprinkling of bacon, yeah. um, so I did feel a little bit disappointed with that. But oh, yeah, they were tasty. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah what we had for lunch was tasty, but it has kind of put a downer on it because sort of when we come into the park, we're absolutely blown away. And for those of you that haven't been here, but you have been to MGM, uh, MGM Studios or now Hollywood Studios in Florida or Universal when they had all the nostalgia stuff in before they put in Hagrid's and Harry Potter and The Simpsons. Um, back in the days of Jaws and Disaster, absolutely come here because you will walk into the park like I did and go, oh my god, I feel like I'm back in America. It's great. Takes you out memory lane. But yeah. yeah, and that's an, uh, kind of another thing that we'll, uh, we'll lead on to. Yeah, the, you, you uh, come into the park, it looks great. You carry on down the uh, sort of the main, like, street. main street, essentially, it looks great. You then pair off one side of Nickelodeon land. That looks fine. Uh, you then move into uh, the Van Helsing sort of area, and that looks like you're dingy and great. Yeah. Then the um, the Star Trek, what was the uh, Federation Plaza? Yeah. Uh, and that is where well, it starts to come a bit unfolded because it's just one ride. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but and that then, leads into the Wild West. Wild West and the <laughs> Broadwalk area, and they both look so tired. Um, and like- it's a, it's a bit of a shame, yeah. but it also, I suppose the Wild West sort of themed area, it does kind of lean into that, you know, obviously yeah. it's been run down and forgotten, but it really does look run down and forgotten, forgotten. not like it's designed to be like that. Yeah. Uh, Broadwalk yeah. area, exactly the same. I've, I commented as we were walking through, I was like, Drayton Manor's done this better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Drayton Manor have done it better. Fort Park with the Amity section, they've done that, that sort of boardwalk area a bit better than what I feel they've done around here. The Wild West section itself is a very good Wild West section, but as Dave says, it just looks a bit more tired and run down than what it should do, which I think spoils it. It may even very well be that Drayton Manor beat them on this as well, because they're at their new area as Wild West, but uh, yeah. not uh, you know, sort of big up Drayton Manor too much because, you know, Port Ventura. Yeah. Their Wild West area beats everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so I think next we're going to have a go on Bandit. This is something that I've um, kind of been looking forward to because it's our first roller coaster corporation of America, wooden roller, roller coaster. coaster. Yeah. Um, it's the oldest operating wooden roller coaster in Germany, which sounds really impressive, but it's 1996 <laughs> or something like yeah. that. I'll put the exact date on the screen, but yeah, it's not massively old when you compare it to uh, Grand National. Mm. Yeah. But you know, it's still an old Woody anyway, so yeah, yep. we're gonna have a go on that. Um, carry on wandering around, see what we can get done, and uh, we'll update you a bit later on. Yeah, there's bits just for you, Nick. You've got lime, orange, vanilla, original, cherry, cherry, vanilla, it looks like, yep. raspberry, and lemon uh, in the Coke flavors. <laughs>
Here we are. In the car. Um, after having had a... Uh, no, I, say, I would say a mixed bag yeah. with, uh, with Movie Park, but not yeah. in a massively negative way. No. Um, so, the negatives, uh, you know, of what... Because we left after our, we'd had our, our dinner, we said we were going to go on... Um, Bandit. Bandit, and yeah. this is where the negatives would start. Bandit, um, as, as mentioned before, is the oldest uh, running ro wooden roller coaster in Germany. Um, I think it, it opened in 1999, yeah. uh, which obviously makes it 25 years old, yeah. which is not that old, but it's running like ass, <laughs> to put <laughs> yeah. it bluntly. Uh, but I don't think it was terrible at all. No. Because what they've done is, I don't know if they realise how unbelievably rough Bandit is, the trains were padded to the next level, so yeah. uh, it meant that yes, you were, it did feel like it was running on square wheels, but yeah. it wasn't so uncomfortable that you didn't want to ride it again. Yeah, it was nowhere near grand national levels of rough. For me, it was essentially a nice bit between sort of megaphobia, Oakwood, and half that between that in the wet and halfway between sort of grand national yeah as in nice and it was jerky and yes there were a couple of corners that threw you and genuinely we come out of the station and we're like the back row like <laughs> <laughs> what have we done here <laughs> yeah because yeah, it comes out of the station onto a small sort of dip and then into a, uh, a corner that then uh, before the lift hill and already you go into the corner which is a very small you know sort of smooth yeah. corner and it's like, <laughs> yeah. and it's like oh god if that's a short as it's low speed corner what's the high speeds gonna yeah. be like but and to be fair though absolutely fun coaster though even at its high speeds it is genuinely one of them if you've got neck back heart problems give it a miss yeah but um, otherwise it's, yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty good fun um other things to give a miss if you've got neck heart and back problems is iron claw um yeah. it's your standard vacoma slc now every single vacoma slc that we've done uh or at least that i've done i've, do, I've been able to do a front row one Kamali's is one of the few that I've done multiple rows on and same with Infusion but Infusion front row uh, Vampire at Wallaby um, Belgium, Belgium. Uh, obviously Iron Claw here and there's a couple more coming up in the trip as well they're not yeah. unbelievably bad on the front row I feel the yeah. thing with Iron Claw was yes you got the, the other sort of side to side, side but it almost felt like the train was coming apart and rejoining <laughs> yeah. itself part yeah. way through because you'd be going around uh, you know, uh, the bottom of a uh, part of a loop and parts of the train would leave and then rejoin so you were getting shoved backwards and forwards. Yeah, you were kangarooing. Yeah, uh. um, <laughs> I've never felt anything like that on a roller coaster um, but yeah it's just your standard layout of a Coma SLC, not much really to add on that. It's no, it's, it's, it's one okay. of the poorer themed rides I feel throughout the whole park which is a bit of a shame it kind of lets the side down yeah they, they have but, tried a little bit yeah. you know, with the fact that the, uh, the, the, the the bird is called Iron Claw and he's starring in films so it obviously ties it into the you know, the, yeah. the, the whole um, you know, movie making process if you will mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's, it's not bad but yeah. there's, there's definitely better here yeah. um, then we followed that up with Fan Helsing's Factory uh, we did, and that was ruined a little bit by other guests. However, we did manage to get two rides on it, um, and both rides are fantastic. I would say yeah. it's probably my favourite ride here because it's it's a Gerslauer um, bobsled. So if you've ridden things like Cobra or Tiki Waka, the Cobra at Pons Park, that is, um, you've got a fair idea what it's going to be like but it will not prepare you for what it's like. Like, no. <laughs> and, like, sort of, even though it's an indoor coaster like Walking Dead, it's next level insane. It doesn't go as fast as Walking Dead and as fast as, like, Tiki Waka, for example. But it doesn't need to. Yeah. Because it's an insane layout, and it's that dark. You don't know whether you're up, whether you're down, whether you're going around a corner, apart from one corner where you get properly thrown into it that's the, that's the thing because uh, you, you, you got the, the first lift hill and essentially it's lift hill into a helix then into another room and then i think you do a uh, you know corner uh, into a dip then the camera takes a photo of you and then the next corner that you do it's dark but it's 90 degrees and it's taken up the coast is probably one of the fastest points yeah um so you probably do you're probably doing 25 miles an hour or something like that as you come into that corner and it properly chucks you into the other person yeah. um, and then you immediately followed by another one that goes the other way yeah. um it is <laughs> 
properly brutal, but it keeps yeah. in uh, in keeping with the Van Helsing sort of vibe. The yeah. idea is that you're yeah. entering Van Helsing's factory where he's building uh, vehicles to take on monsters and the undead. Um, and while you're here, you might as well get in a car and start killing some demons. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's themed well, rides well. It does. Yeah. It's just wonderful. It's Van it Helsing's is, factory. Yeah. Yeah. Don't just because it is a little bit on the more whew, side. Don't let that put you off. Go and try it once. Yeah. It's um, not like Iron Claw and yeah. Bandit where it's like oh, this is oh you know, it's, yeah. It's it, it's very good because of that. But it's not rough. It's just yeah. forceful. Yeah. It's forceful and it's fun. So the next bit that we're going to talk about is uh, Time Riders, yeah. which is a simulator, and it's partly because I don't understand German, and I think it'll be the same for you, yeah. but you get batched into a pre-show, but it doesn't explain it's a pre-show, so you think, <laughs> exactly, yeah. you think you're walking into something like Terra, Terra del Fuego, because there's a, you know, a scene set up in front of you, and there's what feels like Six. school seats, yeah. um, you sat on there. Um, yeah, and, and then John Cleese pops on the telly yeah. and you feel a little bit good because you're like oh John Cleese I know him <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> he starts speaking to you in German yeah. and I'll be honest I don't quite know the story of that um, I've got the yeah. gist of it the fact that you know they've, they've, they've invented uh, time travel and essentially we're testing it um, but then you're batched off into the actual ride yeah. um, now at the start of the ride it does tell you that it's a very rough and ready experience you know it's a simulator um, and we were like, mm, yeah, it's a simulator yeah. sort of thing, and oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Pro tip, do not sit on the back row if you are a short person. Yes. Um, <laughs> what spoiled it a little bit was the fact that we take bags on, um, because it's a, it's a simulator, it's a big, your big sort of um, uh, room that you sit in. But I was concentrating a little bit too much on what my bag was doing because it was as we're going to get again to it was yeah. chucking you about really really violently yeah. um, you do get a seat belt um which goes some way to make sure you don't actually fall on the floor but once again we like we took the back road because it was free i didn't that's what realize was given to us really, it? but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your, your feet were off the, off the floor <laughs> my feet were off the floor and that just didn't help me as a short person at all yeah because there's nothing <laughs> i suppose that there's nothing to hold on to you've got no, no way of bracing yourself and this sounds like we're whinging about oh it's a terrible no it was great fun i thought yeah. it was great fun because of that it's a really really well done simulator and at the moment you could liken it to the star wars ride in the disney parks because it's that kind of level of jerk and rough and kicking around, but that's not to say um, that's not to say it's a bad ride. If you don't like simulators, you don't get on with simulators. Do not go on this ride because there's nothing really you can look round. And that was my problem halfway through was that I was starting to feel really queasy because of it because it was all over the place. Uh, but, but it's still other a good than that, fun. visually, it's a really really good ride and it's really well done. The motions of the the essentially car you're in to what's happening on screen is perfectly matched up, and it's really good to that extent. Yeah, yeah, it's not quite as good as um, I, I can't think of it's Star Wars. Is it Galaxy's Edge? No, it's not no. Galaxy's Edge, but uh, it's mm. the one where C3PO drives. So essentially, we can't trust C3PO or John Cleese to drive these things. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, yeah, it's not quite as good as um, Rise of the Resistance, I think it is. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Or, no, Star Tours. Star Tours, Tours we got yeah. there eventually. Yeah. Um, it's not quite as good as Star Tours, but it's still worth a visit to, I yeah. think. Especially if yeah. you can get, you know, uh, you, you see that the doors are open and you can get in and you're not, wait, you're not waiting too long. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's Time Riders. <laughs> yeah. So as I mentioned earlier on, I said that I was going to go through a little bit of the history of the park because I thought it was just, I thought it was quite interesting because it originally opened in 1967. I'm just reading this essentially verbatim from Royal Coaster Database. It originally opened in 67 uh, uh, um, as essentially what is now Efteling um, in the you know, the fairy tale uh, village, uh, fairy tale forest um, part of Efteling. That's what this park started off as. Um, through the years, it's had multiple owners, including the current owners of Fantasyland. Yeah. Um, or at least the people that started Fantasyland. Um, Six Flags also had a, a, a hand in it um, as part of their Premier Parks uh, sort of brand. Um, that eventually got sold to Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers made it Movie Park. Movie Park becomes Movie Park Germany once Warner Brothers leaves, and here we are in the present day. Um, it's now currently owned by um, uh, Parks Renidos. So I apologize if I butchered that. But what I find interesting on that is that they own Bobbajan Land, a park we've already been to. And also a park that we're going to be going to, which is Slag Haran. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see 
if any of the influencers from uh, you know this have passed on to Slag Aaron and obviously vice versa. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was now it's something like interesting. So final things to sort of talk about is merchandise and I will be honest it's quite lacking. Yes. Um, I mean we did find that there was t-shirts, yep. um, you know a couple of cups. Um, yeah yep. t-shirts, hoodies, a couple of fridge magnets. Other than that it's just kind of general run of the mill. There are a lot of plushies for certain characters like Spongebob stuff like that. Yeah there's a lot of Nickelodeon <laughs> stuff there but other than yep. that there's not really any specific oh uh, you know uh, Van Helsing's factory uh, uh, merch or Bandit merch. There was nothing for Iron Claw at all. No. Um, and um, you know one of the things that we, we, we said in other parks is that Merlin are very good at separating us from money because they do merchandise really well. Yeah. Same as Blackpool Pleasure Beach. European parks, or at least some of them, don't so much, and it does worry me a little bit because, as I mentioned, uh, you know, just a moment ago, that uh, but, uh, this is owned by the same people who own Bobby Jan, and that maybe Slag yeah. Harren's going to be the same as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not as though there's nothing to buy. Um, you know, like uh, yeah. uh, we've got freestyle uh, drinks. Freestyle cups, yeah, yeah, and these are rather nice ones. They worked out at 13 euros each, 3 euros each for the lanyard as well. And because obviously we were buying two, we got them slightly cheaper. Yeah. And there's absolutely stack loads of freestyle machines all around the park, which is really nice to see. And they've got a few extra flavours that we don't a have. A lot back extra flavours. Um, um, yeah, there's a small good sport of flavours in there. Yes. Um, but yeah, merchandise is a bit lacking. Um, some of the areas could do with a bit of a tart up. But yeah. the areas that are, that are newer, like Nickelodeon Land um, and the uh, the sort of the, uh, the Hollywood mm -hmm. Boulevard, they look really, really good. Yeah. Did feel like some of the food offerings were a bit sort of lax. Yeah. Um, some of the food offerings, yeah, they they weren't the best. Um, um, but that said, though, it wasn't what we did eat wasn't tasty. I had some churros later on this afternoon, and they were absolutely yeah. delightful. Everything everything was tasty that we've tried. It's just that some of the yeah, it's, Price versus um, you know quality wasn't quite there. No. But before we get on a, on a massive rant, before the GoPro uh, completely melts itself, yep. um, we're going to leave it there. That is Movie Park Germany, stop number yep. one of our uh, of our uh, trips. So ideal next, family park as well. It is, it is yeah. So. It's a very good family park. You've got your big thrill rides all the way down to your kids' rides. Yep. But uh, next one of these is going to be from Fantasyland. Um, two days there, so hopefully going to make a big bumper one of these. Um, yep. So we will see you there. We will. Thank you.